Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. I hope guys you are aware about the timetable for the live classes and also about our mobile application. <coughs> and guys, these are the sources through which you can connect with us in case you have any kind of query or you need any guidance from our site. So you can call us, mail us or there is discussion forum as well that is discussion.anujindal.in so it's a website where you can sign up and post your queries and we try to resolve them okay so that is also a channel through which you can resolve your queries now let's begin with the first question with which country has india conducted the harimao shakti 2022 exercise so here the right answer is option a malaysia Guys, first of all, this Harimau Shakti is an army exercise and there are only two types of exercise that India conduct with Malaysia. I have already stated this fact in one of my previous videos that India conducts its air force exercise with just a limited number of countries and thankfully India does not conduct any kind of air force exercise. Thankfully because we are as aspirants of the government examination, we have a little less to study and remember. Okay, as far as from a Patriot's perspective, obviously it is not a very good uh, thing in the interest of our nation because when we collaborate with other nations, especially in the military terms, we get the interoperability and at the same time we get to know about their technology as well. And in this manner, we can also collaborate on the technology front and also we are aware about the technology that the other countries are using if if in case they are our neighboring countries then it is very important for us now coming back to the news so india and malaysia have conducted this army exercise and this exercise was conducted in malaysia so the location is pulai clan okay so it is located in malaysia and here this harimau shakti which is an annual training event between india and malaysia was conducted and this exercise is being conducted since 2012. Now guys, I just told you that Air Force exercise did not happen. Uh, we have the Army exercise and the Navy exercise that is Samudra Lakshman. Okay, so Samudra Lakshman is done with Malaysia. Do remember this fact and do not confuse it with Sri Lanka because Sri Lanka ke saath we have the mythological ties as well and since the name Lakshman is attached here so do not confuse it with Sri Lanka it is Malaysia okay now Malaysian capital so it's Kuala Lumpur we all know the currency is ringgit okay so currency is this to remember and Malaysia is a part of Asia nations now, as far as we talk about the geography of Malaysia, so it is divided into two regions. First is the peninsula, Malay Peninsula is there. And second is your, not the Malay Peninsula, sorry, it is the Malaysian Peninsula. And the second is the Borneo Island. I am going to show you that, but let me first teach you this thing. So, do remember geographically, we have two regions on which Malaysia is spread. And as far as the politics of Malaysia is concerned, so it is a federal constitutional monarchy. So these are three terms. Federal means there are states, okay, uh, tied up to a union or they have come together to form a union. Like in India also, India is a federal state. We have different states governing uh, on their own. But yes, we come under one nation. Okay, that is why it is a union of India. <coughs> Constitution. That means there is a constitution <clears throat> plus there is a monarch in Malaysia. So it's a mixed kind of a politics that they follow. Now, the most important thing is that the recently the prime minister of Malaysia was appointed or elected, you can say. So the person is Anwar Ibrahim. Okay, so do remember. Now, discussing about the geography of Malaysia. So, this is an older map. This shows the expanse of the Chola dynasty and the influence of India on the Southeast 
Asia because uh, if you don't know this fact let me tell you that the uh, majority of the countries in the Southeast Asia for example your Cambodia for example Malaysia Thailand all these countries draw uh, their national epics from Ramayana and Mahabharata so this is a very I would say a very gladful thing for us as Indians that we have such strong ties with these neighbors of ours now coming back to the Malaysian uh, location or geography so here guys is Malaysia on the tip of Malaysia here is Singapore and guys this is the Borneo Island here we have three countries Indonesia Malaysia and this is Borneo uh, sorry Brunei Borneo to is pure island ka hi naam hai. okay so I hope that this much is clear to all of you now let's move on to the Next slide, and we were discussing about the Chola dynasty. So I thought to put the picture here. If any one of you is interested in history, then I think you should watch this movie. However, मुझे तो ये movie इतनी ज़्यादा interesting नहीं लगी because that, this movie acted as just the base for the next movie. But in case if you are a history enthusiast, then do give a watch to this movie only in your free time when you are done with your studies. Okay. Now question number two. By which year is China planning to launch its lunar station? So China को हर जगह जाना है Now अब इन्होंने moon पर भी ठिकाना बनाना है तो coming back to the question, it's 2028. Now it is the planning. Okay, China is planning to launch its lunar space station. So let me show you how will it look like. So this would be the lunar space station. This is the conceptual, you can see this time. Conceptual impression of a Chinese lunar base photo is from the China Academy of Space Technology. So they have created a blueprint. You can clearly see here. It's just that now this blueprint needs to be converted into reality. So this is the lunar space station of China. China has also completed its international space station. This is the international space station of China, which is named as Tiangong. जो भी existing international space station है space में, it is a collaborative effort of 15 countries and it is going to retire in 2031. Probably at that point of time, this would be the only space station existing in the space until or unless a new space station comes in the space. Okay, so that is all about China. Now we are talking about the space. So let me inform you. Recently, NASA's Orion spacecraft. has made a successful entry into the orbit of moon okay now what's the significance of this spacecraft <laughs> <coughs> okay so this spacecraft is basically a testing spacecraft for the artemis mission okay so it is an uncrewed mission and this artemis is going to be the crewed mission so here first woman and first man of color will be onboarded on the Artemis spacecraft in 2024 for the launch on lunar surface. Okay, so that was the information. Uh, now let's move on to the question number three. Which state has stopped in the UK IBCs doing in India business report 2022? So here Maharashtra is the title. Uh, if you are even uh, not even a regular but if you follow the current affairs here and there a little bit, then you would have come across this report uh, in my opinion. This report is released by the UK India Business Council and it basically states the friendly states which help the UK businesses operate in India. So on that basis, it prepares a ranking and most of the times this ranking is stopped by Maharashtra. Okay, so this time also it's Maharashtra. Uh, Following Maharashtra, the next state is Gujarat. Okay, then we have Chandigarh, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, and Uttar Pradesh. Okay, so these are the top ranking states which are very helpful as far as the business environment is concerned. Okay, so business ecosystem is thriving in these 
states as far as the UK companies are concerned because this is based on the opinions of those companies only. Okay. <coughs> Uh, question number four with which bank has Sani Bharat um, signed an MOU to make equipment financing an easy, efficient and simple process so here guys the right answer is Union Bank of India So this Union Bank of India and this Sani Bharat organization, they have collaborated so that they can provide the financing options to the customers. Related to Union Bank of India, let me inform you, UB Neg is the application of this. Now as per the agreement, as per this collaboration, the customers of the Sani Bharat will get the finances from the Union Bank of India. India to buy certain equipments okay so uh, this in turn would help the bank a uh, bank's portfolio and the equipment finance to level okay so this is a little bit technical and obviously we don't have to go into this technicality because this is not required for your phase one perspective okay for your phase one examination so just try to remember that Sani Bharat and Union Bank of India have signed the MOU for equipment finance so here three keywords are there that you need to note down or try to remember. First is the Seni Bharat. And in this manner, if you create your own short notes, it will help you. So Seni Bharat, uh, Union Bank of India, Equipment Funds. <clears throat> if you remember these three keywords from this news, then it will help you in cracking the question related to this news. Apart from this, you don't have to remember anything from this news, just these three keywords. So the next question is, which company has launched do-it-yourself insurance Digifasal, the first of its kind in the country? So here guys, Absolute is the name of the company which has launched this TG Fussel, which is an insurance product. Obviously, Fussel se related hai, to who would it cater to? It is going to cater to the farmers. Okay, so it is a do-it-yourself product. So, how will the farmers do it? So, there is a portal. On the portal, this insurance product is available. So, the farmers are going to enroll themselves in that product, and this is how it is called a do-it-yourself product. Digi Fasal insurance product. Okay, I hope you are understanding. Now, coming to the news so it's a plant bioscience company, absolute. It has launched this insurance product, Digi Fasal. Okay, for the farmers only. Okay, it will be introduced on the Upach platform of absolute. So, this can also be a question that Upach platform belongs to which company? So, absolute is the name. Okay, Upach is a one stop solution for all kinds of needs of the farmers from the sowing of the seeds till the harvest stage and even after that post harvest stage baby this helps this upach platform provides guidance to the farmers <coughs> question number 6 ever source promoted accretive clean tech finance private limited operating as e coffee has received rbs approval to operate as a non-deposit taking NBFC who is the CEO of eCoffee. So here guys what is the right answer? The right answer is Rajeshri Nambia. Okay now before going into the details I want to ask from all of you the limits okay. I hope you are you remember that NBFCs in India are divided into four categories base layer, middle layer, top layer sorry upper layer and top layer so these are the four layers in which the nbfcs are divided in india so your task is to tell me the limit for each and every layer okay this is your task do find it out and tell me and when you were finding out the limits please read the limit criterion and the news related to that okay because that is important now coming back to this e coffee so this e-coffee is 
this company has received the license from RBI to operate as a non-deposit taking NBFC. Now understand this point that the non-deposit taking NBFCs have a lesser burden of liabilities in comparison to the deposit taking NBFCs. Okay. And secondly, the regulations on these non-deposit taking uh, NBFCs is a little I would say flexible in comparison to the deposit taking that NBFCs and I don't think that I need to explain why is it so. The reason is that they are taking public's money and public money is not anyone's uh, property. Okay, it is the public money and the government has to regulate it. Okay, so there is a little uh, you can say extra burden of regulation, supervision and liabilities on the deposit taking NBFCs. But it does not mean that a free hand has been given to these non-deposit taking NBFCs. Okay. <coughs> so this makes e-coffee uh, enter among the early green retail NBFCs. Okay. So it provides the funding for the green projects. This accredited clean tech finance private limited. Okay. It is funded or promoted by the Eversource Capital, which is a climate impact investor. So they only provide funding or loan for the projects which help in mitigating the climate change or which are clean and green in nature. Okay, co-founder and CEO of eCoffee is Rajeshri Nambiar. And this name is a very, I would say, prominent name in the world of NBFCs. Okay, so that is all about this news. The next question is, who is, oh sorry, what is the interest rate on Kisan credit cards? So, it's a very prominent initiative of the government to provide the short term loans to the farmer. So, what is the interest rate? Now, pay attention to the question. It's the interest rate. Interest rate is 7%. Interest subvention is 1.5%. And in case the farmers pay loans early, then the interest subvention increases to 3%. Now, in that case, how much would that actual farmer has to pay? Okay. So, in case of interest subvention, normal interest subvention, the farmer has to pay, uh, you can say, 5.5%. Okay. Because we are deducting 1.5% interest rate from the 7%. And in case of early payment of the loan then the farmer has to pay 4% interest okay so that's the interest rate on the Kisan credit card loan of the farmer now what is the limit because I told you that it's a short term and short amount loan so it is limit to, to, limited to rupees 3 lakhs okay so this is the loan limit this is the interest rate this is the normal subvention this is the conditioned subvention this will only be availed only when the farmers pay loans early okay so that is written here so what has happened recently the rbi has increased or you can say extended the tenure of the uh, you can say scheme and its interest rate and the interest subvention okay for fy23 and fy24 okay this I just explained you and how this entire mechanism of inter interest subvention works. So basically government provide the money of interest subvention to the banks, banks or the lending institutions, whichever is accredited by the government. Okay. So the difference that is suppose uh, seven percent interest rate hai and one point five percent interest subvention. Hai. So this one point five percent amount will be paid by the government to the bank because the bank is not going to bear any kind of loss on its own. Okay, that is why the interest subvention comes into play, and that is why the government's subsidy burden, interest subvention burden, and such burdens are increasing. Okay, that's the basic idea. I hope you are understanding the. Functioning of the interest subvention. Subsidy B is in format. Pe kaan karti hai. <coughs> Question number 8 is who is the latest to join the government's open network for digital commerce? Okay, so by now we have learned 
a hundred of companies might have joined this ONDC, a mammoth kind of platform that is being developed by the government of India. But again, this platform has not been developed yet. It is under development. <coughs> so it has been joined by Misho. Okay, so the products of Misho will be uh, displayed on this platform once it comes in implementation. Okay. Paytm has also joined the ONDC Paytm Mall. <coughs> Question number nine is Who is the managing director of the National Dairy Development Board? So, here, guys, Manish Shah is the right answer. So, uh, Manish Shah has been promoted as the MD of this organization. Earlier, he was the chairperson. Now, guys, we are discussing about the Dairy Development Board. So, I just remember that we celebrated National Milk Day on November 26th, which is the birth anniversary of the father of White Revolution, okay, or the milkman of India. That is Vargis Kurian, Dr. Vargis Korean and he was the man credited for the white revolution in India. So his birth anniversary was on November 26th and on that day the National Milk Day is celebrated and National Gopal Ratna Awards were also given. Okay. So that is all about this news. Question number 10. Which state has won the best state for promoting sports at India Sports Award of Fiki? So here guys, Odisha is the right answer. When it comes to sports, you can also see the pictures of Naveen Patnaik, the CM of Odisha. He is very much into sports whenever it comes to especially hockey. So he's out there in the fields and uh, promoting the sport and cheering up for the, work, uh, for the players. So that is the level of enthusiasm and the level of encouragement that the state gives to the sports. So whenever it comes to sports, you can clearly mark Odisha, okay, because that's the state which promotes the sport at a next level, you can see. Now coming back to the news. So India sports awards were given by Vicky and these are the categories of awards and their winners. First of all is the uh, Sarkar Talwar, who has won the Lifetime Achievement Award. Then Para Sports Person of the Year is Avni Lekra. <coughs> in Tokyo, in Tokyo Paralympics, she has won many awards. Okay, like then we have Drona Chari Lifetime Award, Man of Rachna Education Institution, Special Sports Person of the Year, Shrey Kadyan. Best state for promoting sport is Odisha. Then we have All India Chess Federation being given the National Sports Federation of the Year Award for hosting the Chess Olympiad. So it was the 44th edition of the Chess, uh, sorry, Chess Olympiad, which was held in India. Okay. In which state was it held? Can you tell me in the comment section? below? So here guys, this video ends. I hope you have enjoyed the content. In case you have any kind of feedback, you can provide it uh, to us on the mobile number okay so this is the whatsapp number as well so you can provide your feedback through the whatsapp or you can put it down in the comment section below on that note i would like to say goodbye to all of you stay healthy and start study hard okay